Everyone loves Reddit, especially Chinese tech companies. Tencent is investing millions in Reddit, which is weird because Reddit is blocked in China. So what's their real motivation? Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Reddit, the tech company that calls itself the front page of the internet, is looking to expand it. Reddit has just raised $300 million in the company's fourth round of funding. Half of that is from a major Chinese tech company. But who cares if it's from a Chinese company? Because this round of funding puts Reddit's valuation at an astronomical $3 billion. Now that's a lot of money, especially if you consider what Reddit actually is. It's basically a no-frills online message board where people create discussion threads called subreddits and then vote up or down posts they think are awesome or lame. Example, a subreddit called Funny, where Reddit user B. Rodriguez posted a photo captioned Jamaican Super Lotto winner taking no chances was upvoted by 119,000 people. Or the subreddit, who's the dumbest person you've ever met? Which featured a post by a teacher about a ninth grade student who allegedly ate an entire 24 pack of crayons, puked, and then did it again the next day, and tased himself in the neck before a football game. Noah the Red's post was upvoted nearly 18,000 times. Anyway, you get the idea. This company is worth $3 billion. And that's, of course, why Chinese tech giant Tencent is investing a whopping $150 million in Reddit. Tencent is headed by Ma Hua Tung, also known as Pony Ma, who's apparently trying to figure out exactly why offering to invest $150 million in Reddit has sparked such a torrent of fury. See, Reddit users started rebelling as soon as they heard about the Chinese funding deal. Rebelling how? By posting content that would be banned in China. Like Tank Man, the guy who famously stood up to stop tanks that were rolling out of Tiananmen Square in 1989, that had just run over pro-democracy protesters, including these students on hunger strike. Or also on Tiananmen, but more recently, police brutally arresting practitioners of the banned Falun Gong spiritual group. But not all the backlash is gloomy. There's the cheery design proposal for Reddit's new logo, featuring Winnie the Pooh. The cuddly bear is often censored in China because of its obvious resemblance to Chinese leader Xi Jinping. But don't worry, it's unlikely Xi Jinping will see all those Winnie the Pooh memes because since last August, Reddit itself has been banned in China. Now, Reddit users are afraid that their beloved platform, known for uncensored free speech, is going to get censored to meet the demands of the Chinese Communist Party. See, Tencent has a history of censoring things the CCP doesn't like. Its Chinese platforms QQ and WeChat are both heavily censored, and they work with Chinese authorities to give them access to user data. Amnesty International did a report back in 2016 on tech companies protecting users against threats to privacy and freedom of expression. The results? Not so good for Tencent. Chinese firm Tencent came bottom, the report reads, scoring zero out of 100, ranked as the company taking least action on messaging privacy and the least transparent. Snapchat, which Tencent owns a 10% share of, came in third from the bottom. Who would have thought that the app that scans millions of users with advanced facial recognition technology so they could wear cute dog ears would have privacy issues? But defenders of Tencent's investment in Reddit say that Tencent is a private company, so there's no real danger they'd bring in censorship or leave a back door for the Chinese Communist Party to access, right? Well, Tencent is a private company with Chinese characteristics. What I mean is, in China, pretty much every company that's made it big is only big because it has links to the Communist Party. Here's Tencent CEO Pony Ma and another famous tech CEO, Jack Ma, no relation, clapping during a speech Xi Jinping gave two months ago inside the Great Hall of the People. 
Boy, they were given great seats. In that speech, where everyone was forced to clap, Xi Jinping said that the Communist Party would maintain leadership over all tasks. That includes tech companies. Both Jack and Pony were also honored at that event for their outstanding contributions to China's economy. So yeah, they may be called private companies, but they're still under the direction of the party. According to the Financial Times, more than 35 Chinese tech companies, including big ones like Sina and Baidu, have quietly set up Communist Party committees, which assess a company's daily operations to ensure they do not stray from party objectives. Think of it like your company's HR department, but one that's working for the authoritarian state you live under. You do not want to get called in for that performance assessment. But it's not all bad. Xu Zewei, founder of Chinese fintech platform 91 Finance, was quoted in the Financial Times article as saying that to be affiliated with the Communist Party is good for our brand. And when recruiting, we specifically seek out party members. Trey McCarver, co-founder of a consultancy that advises companies on how to do business in China, put it even more bluntly. No company, private or state-owned, gets ahead in China without aligning itself with the party's larger goals. Take a company like Huawei, the world's biggest telecom equipment maker. Not only does it make telecom equipment, but it also helps the Communist Party with little things on the side, like espionage. Just last month, the Polish government arrested a Huawei employee on allegations of spying for China. And federal prosecutors in the United States are pursuing a criminal investigation of Huawei for allegedly stealing trade secrets from American business partners. Investing in U.S. technology is one of the Chinese Communist Party's strategic objectives. And it's not just the well-known companies like Reddit that they're interested in. Chinese private companies, which again, once they get to a certain size, pretty much all have links to the party, have been investing heavily in Silicon Valley. That's partly because they want to get in on U.S. technology. Why? It's all part of China's secret plan to rule the world through high tech. Just kidding. It's not a secret plan. It's called Made in China 2025, and it's even been promoted by state-run media like CGTN. China has been making greater efforts to promote its manufacturing industry since the implementation of the Made in China 2025 plan. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, it's a 10-year comprehensive blueprint aimed at transforming China into an advanced manufacturing leader. Well, that doesn't sound all that dangerous. Except experts like Michael Brown, who runs the Pentagon's Defense Innovation Unit, says there's a big worry in the intelligence community. They fear the Chinese regime could get their hands on too much sensitive U.S. technology, transfer it back home, and pose a threat to American national security. They don't play by the same rules that we do, says Brown, so cyber theft is on the table and industrial espionage is on the table. So China's big play in Silicon Valley is about way more than Reddit or Snapchat. It's about finding ways to acquire the newest technologies and ship them back to China, where they can help China dominate the world's tech industries, inform the Chinese military, or be useful in the state surveillance apparatus. And just how big is China's big play for American innovation? This chart from Reuters shows that since 2015, when the Made in China 2025 plan was launched, the amount of Chinese cash flowing into U.S. startups exploded. Last year, it surpassed $3 billion. Now, I'm not saying these investors are all accessing sensitive technology, and Chinese venture capital is still a minority compared to American venture capital. But according to Adam Lysenko, an analyst for the Rhodium Group, the risk exists that Chinese companies could access sensitive technology in an early stage where U.S. government, military, and other security individuals haven't had a full chance to evaluate the implications of those technologies. But there is some good news on the national security front. The Trump administration has taken steps to curb the risk of Chinese investment in U.S. technology. Trump signed a new law clamping down on China's access to American innovation. 
It broadens the authority of the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. That's the committee that examines national security risks of foreign investment in the U.S. Already the committee has recommended blocking deals. They've done that several times so far, including putting a halt to a Chinese state-backed company's attempt to buy a U.S. semiconductor company for $1.3 billion. And the administration's harder line on protecting American intellectual property has slowed the flow of Chinese funding. And those deals have mostly stopped, partly because of the hassle of having to deal with a potential CFIUS review. So the real danger of Chinese investment in U.S. technology is not so much about social media sites like Reddit. But does Tencent's investment in Reddit mean that Reddit posts will be censored to please the Chinese Communist Party? Right now, it's unlikely, unless Reddit wants to get unblocked in China and is willing to self-censor to do it. Other U.S. tech companies, like Facebook and Google, have been willing to self-censor to get into the Chinese market, which is bad because it normalizes state censorship. But Tencent's Reddit investment seems separate from that for now. So hopefully, Reddit posts like this one can escape the long reach of Chinese censors. Unless Reddit users give it a thumbs down. And before we go, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Hu Han Min of the Hill People asks, What do you think of the reporting on the following? Guaido has said all lawful agreements approved by Venezuela's National Assembly will be honored, a statement widely seen as an olive branch to China. Good question, Hu Han Min. I think Guaido needs all the international support he can get right now. And given that the Chinese regime has been supporting Maduro with money and weapons, Guaido may feel it's worth a big compromise to get the Chinese regime to support him. Frankly, that's how politics work. Guaido is not in a strong position to challenge China right now, even if he wants to. We'll have to wait and see what happens if he actually gets into power properly. If you want to learn more, listen to the China Unscripted podcast, where I interview an actual Venezuelan expert slash comedian about this. The link is below. Thanks for your question. And as always, I hope all of our supporters on Patreon will continue to leave thoughtful, interesting questions within each Patreon post, so I can answer them on the show. Thank you so much for your support. You're what keeps the lights on here at China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.